The pit also can be rendered as well. Well. And it's called a waterless pit. Job 17, 16. Does the Old Testament know of the underworld, also called the netherworld, also the abode of the dead? They shall go down to the bars of the pit when our rest together is in the dust. There's the pit. There's the pit, all right? Psalm 55, 22 to 23. Psalm 55, 22 to 23. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, Yahuwah, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction, who bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. That is a clear reference to punishment. If he's talking about the grave, well, both the righteous and the wicked go to the grave. Something more is involved here. The pit can't be the common grave. Because he's contrasting the fate of the wicked with the righteous. If the pit is referring to the grave, well, all of us go to the grave, right? The pit that the wicked and bloodthirsty men go down to must be something other than the grave. Because it's a punishment for the wicked, not for the righteous. Here, one more time. The righteous shall not be moved. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Okay, you see? There you go. Now let's look at some other references. Psalm 69, 15. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. See, that's the fate of the wicked. So God, he's crying out, Lord, forgive me. Save me from this fate. Save me from this fate. Psalm 140, verses 9 to 11. Psalm 140, verses 9 to 11. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. This is talking about the fate of the wicked who don't repent. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits. Can it be any clearer, dude? Can it be any clearer that he's referring to hell? Cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Could it be any clearer? Could it be any clearer? The Old Testament shows awareness of a painful judgment for the wicked. If you want to really know that the pit is not some common grave, look at here. Psalm 143, verse 7. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me. Lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. You caught it? If the pit is a common grave, why is he asking, don't make me like those that go into the pit? Now notice a distinction between the grave and the pit. Watch here. Proverbs 1, 10 to 12. Proverbs 1, 10 to 12. My son, if sinners entice thee, Consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, killing innocent people. Let us lurk privily, privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. You, you see, not only the grave, but the pit. Because when you die and go to grave, you go to the pit, right? Not because they're one and the same, but because why do you die? Contrary to what some people teach, soul sleep, your spirit leaves your body. So your body goes one way, your spirit goes elsewhere. And I'll confirm that a little more. All right, here you go. This one is lengthy. It's about Lucifer. Are you ready now? Lucifer, are we ready? Okay, let's go here. Watch here. Tell me if this doesn't sound like the underworld, the netherworld. Isaiah 14, it's a lengthy one. Verses 9 to 21. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. The word is Sheol. Greek, it's Hades, Hades. And the King James rendered as hell. Notice this place is a place where there are people there who are conscious. They're consciously alive here. Watch the description. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth, 
It hath raised them up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and send to thee. When you go down there, where everyone is, even the wicked kings like you, whom you killed, right? And you ended up experiencing the same fate as them. They look at you and say, art thou, are you the one? You become like us, weak like us? Because over here in Hades, in Sheol, in the underworld, we're all the same. No one has an advantage over someone else. So now you're just like us, huh? Powerless and weak. Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp, your arrogance is brought down to the grave. And the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee. Now it's talking about his body. Your body is now covered with worms. And here you are with us. And the worms cover thee. Do you notice there's two parts to him? The body that's covered with worms in the grave and him coming down to Hades and Sheol where the others are there looking at him astonished. So you're nothing, huh? You're just as powerless and weak like us. Okay, now watch who this is. Get ready. Watch who this is. Here it is, Isaiah 14, 9 to 21. We're picking up at 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. There you go. Notice, it's pit and sheol. This is the punishment of Lucifer. Are you going to tell me that sheol means the grave? Are you seriously going to tell me that sheol means the grave? Or that sheol means hell, the pit. Hell and the pit. The punishment of the wicked who are damned. Is it obvious that here sheol cannot mean the grave? Because it's talking about Lucifer wants to be a god and God will strike him dead. And he's going to go down to Sheol and to the pit. And then Isaiah 14, 9 to 11, we're told that those in Sheol, those are the kings, the pagan rulers who are also killed. And they're alive and conscious. And when they see Babylon come down, you too? FYI, this is a fact. Did you know the belief that there is life beyond death, beyond the grave? was widespread and universal among all cultures. This notion of soul sleep, you won't even find it attested in these cultures. These cultures, Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, the Greeks, all knew that when you die, your soul leaves your body and you go to the underworld. Do you know that? It was widespread. The notion of soul sleep, that is actually novel and new. That is novel and new. All cultures. Why do you think they would have the right of passage? They would have funeral rites in order to make the passage of the soul of the dead enter into the next realm with ease. Like they would put coins on the eyes of the Greeks who were slain so that the boatman would come and they would have money to pay for the ride, the ferry ride to Hades. So it's much more widespread than people think. Now, let me go to another lengthy passage. This is Ezekiel 28. Uh, Ezekiel 31 is another one. It's Ezekiel 31, 10 to 18. Therefore, says the Lord God, Adonai Yahuwah, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, he has shot up his top among the thick bows, and his heart is lifted up in his height. I have therefore delivered him into the hand. This talking about this pagan ruler king. Who God is going to destroy, show that he's no God of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. And strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him. Upon the mountains and all the valleys, his branches are fallen. And his bows are broken by all the rivers of the land. And all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Now watch what happens to him when he gets killed in battle and struck down. Watch here. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of the heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. 
to the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height. Now, this is all speaking metaphorically of human kingdoms and nations as trees and bows, right? That when they see what happens to this arrogant ruler, as mighty as he is, they'll be afraid to become arrogant, lest they get humble too. Neither their trees shall stand up in their height, all that drink water, for they are all delivered unto death. Now watch. To the nether parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit. Do you see it? The reference to the pit? Nether parts of the world. The underworld. Defeat nether part, meaning the underworld. Thus saith the Lord God, Adonai Yahuwah, in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused the morning, I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof, and the great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nation shake at the sound of his fall. When I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit. There you go. Cast him to Sheol into the pit. Now guess who's there, guys? And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon. Now this is speaking of human rulers and nations metaphorically as trees. All that drink water shall be comforted in other parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him. Unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm, that dwelt under his shadow in the midst of the heathen, to whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden into the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. Ezekiel 32, it's a long one, 70 to 32. This is going to blow you away. Watch who's there in the pit in Sheol. Ezekiel 32, 17 to 32. Ezekiel 32, 17 to 32. It's long, but I got to go through it. Watch. Oh, there's no hell in the old, in the old Testament, Sam. There's no, all right. Okay, here you go. It, come, it came to pass also in the 12th year, in the 15th day of the month, that the word of the Lord, the word of Jesus, I mean, the word of the Father, because it's Jesus speaking, he's the word that comes, unto me saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? In other words, you're incomparable. There's no one like you, Pharaoh, but as great and beautiful and majestic you are, I'll make you nothing. Go down and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell. Say what? Those who are in hell will speak to him. Those who are in hell before him, when he goes down there, they'll be talking to him. You see it? The mighty ones, the kings who were killed and slain before him, who are in hell, they'll be speaking to him when he comes down. Out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down. They lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Now here's the Assyrians, by the way. Ashur, that means Assyrians, the land of the Assyrians, is there in all her company. His graves are about him. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, right? Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit. Now watch. And her company is round about her grave. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. See, when they were alive on earth, they terrorized people. There is Elam. This is all around Iran and Iraq. And all her multitude around about her grave. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth which caused their terror in the land of the living. Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about them. All of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though their terror caused in the land of the living. Yet they have borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. If this is the common grave, then what's the punishment? 
Even the righteous go down there. But this is supposed to be their punishment and shame. He is put in the midst of them that be slain. So who's there? Now notice who's there in the pit, in hell, in Sheol. There is Meshach, Tubal, and all her multitude. Her graves are round about him. All of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they cause their terror in the land of the living. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. And they have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquity shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised and shall shalt lie with them that are slain with the sword. There is Edom, all these mighty nations and peoples, her kings and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with them that go down to the pit. If the pit is the common grave, even the righteous go there. But this is supposed to be punishment, judgment, wrath, and humiliation. So they were killed physically and buried, but then they went down to the pit, to Sheol, hell. There be the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain. With their terror, they are ashamed of their might. And they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them. Wait, how does he see them? How does Pharaoh see them if this is the grave? Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitude. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God, Adonai Yehoah, for I've caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword. Even Pharaoh... And all his multitude saith, Adonai, Yahuwah. How does Pharaoh see these kings who are all in the pit? If the pit is not referring to the realm of the dead, the spirits of the dead who are slain, their bodies buried in graves, but their souls go there and they're conscious and they're aware of one another. So when Pharaoh goes down and says, hey, I'm not the only one. All of you suckers are here too. Pharaoh will see them. In other words, when Pharaoh is slain, his body's buried, and his soul goes down, he's going to see the kings of the nations. He's going to see their multitudes there. Hey! And his, his soldiers coming down with him. Hey, we're not alone, boys. They're all here. So we're all now in the same place, even playing field. We're on the same level. No one is mightier than the other. We're all powerless and weak. Here to Psalm 88, verses 118. This is a long one. I hope you learn a lot more how in-depth, how supernatural the Bible is, how deep the Bible is, and how much truth there is about the spirit realm in the Old Testament that's hidden from our eyes because of the proliferation of modern translations or scholarship that tries to de-emphasize the supernatural aspect of the Hebrew Bible. And it's clear references to the afterlife, okay? So you ready now for the two final ones? Watch here. Psalm 88, verses 1 to 18. O Lord God, Yehoah, Elohim, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. Okay? I am counted with them that go down into the pit. Lord, I'm going down to the pit, but I'm righteous. Save me. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more. Right? And they are cut off from thy hand, meaning your provision. Notice there are levels to hell and the pit. This makes sense. Because the Bible tells us, specific New Testament, there are degrees of punishment. That's in the New Testament. The New Testament talks about degrees and levels of punishment. So it only makes sense that the Old Testament speaks of levels of hell, levels of the pit. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit. So if there's a lowest pit, there are pits that are a little higher. In darkness, in the deeps. Notice darkness. That's what Jesus said. 
They'll be cast out into outer darkness, Matthew 8, 12. Will they be weeping and gnashing of teeth? They, thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. He's feeling like God is judging him for sin. Now he's confessing it, asking God to forgive him as he turns away from sin. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. See, he's confessing, God, you're punishing me because of my sin, but I'm confessing, repenting, so that he can be forgiven. And he doesn't share the fate of the wicked who go down to the lowest pit in darkness. Lord, Yahweh, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Will thou show wonders to the dead? Yeah, once you're dead and you're in the pit, God is not going to do any miracles and signs to bring you to salvation. It's over. Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Those who are in the graves, they're not going to praise you for anything you do in the land of the living. Their fate is sealed. Selah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Now watch. Or thy faithfulness in destruction? Remember this word, abandon, brethren. Please remember it. Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? What did Jesus say? Matthew 8, 12. This place is outer darkness. And thy righteous land of forgetfulness? What does he mean, forgetfulness? When you die, all your plans, all your <clears throat> efforts to get ahead of life, Forgotten, because once you go down there, you will you will care less about money, business, property, possessions, and pleasures. All of those will be forgotten, because you'll be in a state of misery, darkness. But unto thee have I cried, O Lord Yahuwah, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee, meaning my prayer will cause you to turn from punishing me. Why castest castest Thou off my soul, why hides, hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together, lover and friend. Hast thou put far from me, this is the consequence of my sins and rebellion, discipline from the Lord, severe discipline, to get my attention to repent and turn and fear him and be restored so he can bless me, and my acquaintance into darkness. Now, remember this word, Abaddon. What is Abaddon? Here you go, Revelation 9, 11. And what is this darkness that he's talking about? Revelation 9, verse 11 from the Revised Standard Version. They have a king, they have as king over them. He's talking about the bottomless pit, the abuso. This pit where their demons chain will be unleashed for five months. They have a king over them, the inhabitants of the abuso, the abyss, bottomless pit. The angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. And in Greek he's called Apollyon, meaning destroyer, destruction. What more proof do you want? That here in the Old Testament, Abaddon refers to a spirit creature, an angelic creature, the destroyer, who's the king of the abyss. The abyss is the realm where demons are constrained and punished until the day of judgment. What about outer, outer darkness? Well, here you go. What is outer darkness or darkness that he was afraid to descend to? Matthew 8, 12. While the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. Their men will weep and gnash their teeth. Do you see how much truth there is in the Hebrew Bible regarding the afterlife, that there's life beyond the grave? And at that time, everyone went to the underworld, the netherworld called Sheol, Hades. Some were in, part, in torment. Some were in pain and misery. Some were in the pit. Others were not. They're in a state of peace. So don't be deceived by modern translations. Don't be deceived by cult groups that say soul sleep. It is a lie from the pit of hell, pun intended. All the New Testaments overwhelmingly prove that when you physically die, your soul spirit leaves, you're still alive and conscious, either in torment or in peace. And now after Christ, he now has opened heaven because heaven is a city. 
for saints who die in union with the Lord to enter heaven. And it's a city. And in the city, you have a palace, a kingdom where the triune God dwells. Everyone else will be outside it in that city, which is a garden, enjoying the pleasures of God until they descend with the Lord at his return when he then raises their physical bodies and they inhabit their physical bodies now made immortal. That's the teaching of the Bible from beginning to end.